turn on the recording. Okay. Right. So let's get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to my first uh, coffee meeting talk and the last of this year. So let me introduce myself again. I'm Kunrat, one of the newcomer here. So, so today I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, what I'm interested in now, and which is basically an inspiration of my current work. And the title of my talk, and this is the title, is a uh, specific to the looking graph. And I'm going to tell you uh, about this Carlian limit and uh, mentioning some of uh, its characteristics. So, uh, so I, I have to but uh, so I'm not going to go into detail of my of my research. But instead, I want to have uh, give a letter introduction, like a basic introduction of what is the Kalian, what Kalian means, and why some people find it interesting. And in fact, I have already talked about it uh, in the seminar two weeks ago. So for those of you who joined my seminar, this is going to be a little bit boring. So sorry, everyone. But anyway, so let's proceed. So, so let me let me start from something simple, right? So let me start from high side, right? So the all our modern theoretical physics of our modern physics, maybe at least half of our modern physics to high side, right? So this theory, the theory of relativity, uh, gives us a, a new understanding of the of the true nature of space and time, right? So in Yes. So, so in special electricity, you have like the idea of uh, that you have the constant of nature, right? Which is uh, the speed of light, uh, the speed of the massive particle. Right? And in, in, in the framework of electricity, both space and time are related. Right? And these two principles, I mean, together, they, they lead to uh, a type of symmetry of, of physics, right? That's space time, right? So this is what we call, what you call, call the Poincaré symmetry. And, and the Poincaré symmetry, uh, what is it? So basically it is uh, a, a symmetry of your, your physical theory. Right? So, so if you look at the uh, at space time diagram, so now P is a uh, time coordinate, area coordinate. So, I, I give you the example in two dimension for simplicity, but you can. And, and in this uh, space time diagram, uh, the photon or right uh, or a massive particle is going to travel along this red line. Right? And this red line is called the light cone. And the slope of this light cone is one over C, where C is the speed of light. And, and any particles, any massive, uh, massive particles, uh, it's going to can only travel I mean, within this light cone. So, so in special electricity, you have some kind of barrier and right? you have some kind of speed limit. But, but uh, in this framework, uh, the coordinates uh, do not have like a, a true physical meaning. Right? So you can check uh, them, right? You can do the coordinate transformation. And you can do the coordinate transformation in such a way that uh, it leaves uh, your physics uh, 
and change, right? And that type of coordinate transformation is what we call the form grade uh, transformation of form grade symmetry. And, and this is like, uh, this formula is like uh, the most basic version in two dimensions. So you have this uh, T and X palm is uh, the, the new palm coordinate and the new uh, uh, spatial coordinate. And you have this uh, capital T and capital X, which let me say the, the translation in, in time in space. And you have this beta, and beta is parameterized uh, the Lorentz transformation or Lorentz boost. Uh, and, the, and this Lorentz transformation is the transformation that can make a uh, spatial relativity a spatial, right? Because it makes uh, both uh, space and time together. And, and this is like a, a, a basic picture of spatial relativity. So this is I star. This is relativity. But, but we all know that before the time of I star, our physics was built uh, upon the idea of uh, Galileo, upon the idea of Newton, right? And it is not relativity. So the question is, uh, uh, so we go from 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 relativity from Einstein back to our usual uh, Galileo picture or new the picture of Newton, right? So this is uh, the story of of non relativistic uh, limit. So okay, okay. So we have this non relativistic limit of people call it uh, the Galilean limit. So in this limit, you take uh, take this uh, the speed on light C to infinity, right? And, and in this limit, you get the, the usual picture of, of, of our physics, our old fashioned physics, right? Newtonian physics. So you have absolute time, but you have a uh, space is uh, related. So space and time decouple, time is absolute, space is related. And this form of asymmetry is going to be contracted uh, to what we call the Galilean symmetry. Uh, it's given by this uh, equation. So you still have this uh, space of time translation, but you have this uh, another version of boost, which is called the Galilean boost, uh, E here. And V, uh, you can think of V as a velocity. And it is related to this uh, Lorentz boost uh, by this formula. And, and you may notice that this type of uh, transformation also reflects uh, the fact that you have absolute time, but the space is related. And if you look at the, at the space time diagram, if you look at the structure of the light code, right, and you see that in this image, when you send C to B, <laughs> And the scope of this uh, of the late line uh, is going to uh, become zero, right? So it means that, that the light pole is open now in this limit. And what does it mean? It means that in this limit, you don't have uh, speed limit for, for any particle, right? So particles can travel as fast as they want, and they can go anywhere they want. And this is... Uh, this is uh, the physics of our everyday life, of our everyday life. So it is the physics of the youth group. But now, this is the, the C to infinity limit. You can also ask, yes, what, what if we take uh, uh, the opposite limit to this, to this limit, right? By that I mean, what if we take C to be zero instead of infinity? What do we take? And that limit has a special name. And the name is Carolian uh, limit or the ultra local limit. So I get uh, C to zero limit. And in this limit, you get kind of opposite behavior to what you usually uh, uh, experience. So in this limit, you have relative time instead of absolute time, but your space is absolute. And Similar to the Galilean asymmetry, you will get another notion of symmetry, which is called the color symmetry. And this color symmetry also reflects uh, the fact that uh, you have 
and this relative term and your state is absolute. And you have this, this have like uh, the analog of velocity in this current and and it, again, if you look at the, the the structure of the light cone in, in your space time diagram, right? So if you take C to be zero, then the light cone change, so it collapses. So naively, it it means that uh, your particle cannot move, so the motion is kind of frozen in the limit. So this limit is kind of Kind of strange is it's, uh, it's peculiar and it's kind of opposite to what we what we are used to, and and uh, a little bit of history. Uh, this limit was uh, first considered by a guy named Levi Lavoie back in the seventies, but but out of uh, just from his uh, uh, mathematical curiosity, just uh, some math exercise. For him. And interestingly, he named this limit, uh, the Carolian limit. He, he didn't name it after himself. He named it after uh, Lewis Carroll. And if you don't know, uh, Lewis Carroll is, uh, is the author of one of uh, the most famous uh, novel in uh, one, of the, uh, one of the famous novels, right? And Alice in Wonderland. And the sequel through the looking glass, and if you remember through the looking glass, it's uh, it, the title of my presentation. So this is where I take it from. And in this novel through the looking glass, uh, there is a, a conversation between two characters, mm -hmm. uh, and that two character is uh, one of them is uh, Alice uh, and. If you don't know uh, about Alice in Wonderland, so Alice is kind of a, a girl in, in our world, right? And uh, she somehow basically uh, goes to some magical world, Wonderland. And she speaks with uh, another character, which is uh, the great queen, which is, uh, who is the ruler of, of Wonderland. And I think uh, this, uh, this conversation kind of encapsulates uh, the whole idea and the whole difference between this Galilean limit and Galilean limit. So, so at least then, well, in her country, which means in our world, right? You would generally get to somewhere else if you learn very fast for a long time. And this is uh, the standard picture that we have about, about our physics, right? So this Galilean physics. But the late queen response, and she said that, oh, well, as no sort of country, now you see it helps all the learning you can do keep in the same place. And this is uh, a kind of effect, right? the fact that you cannot, um, the, the particle cannot move, it is a cardiac limit. And this, uh, this sentence by the, the left queen have encapsulated the idea of this uh, cardiac limit. Of course, I mean, Lewis, uh, Car Carlo, the author, uh, I mean, has nothing to do with this, uh, this league in Carlian, Carlian at all. But I guess that uh, Lady Le Bon uh, took inspiration from uh, this sentence in this novel, and then he named this league of uh, Lewis Carlo, Carlo and Lee. So this is uh, a little bit about history. And the question is, uh, uh, why do we care at all, right? Why do we care about this limit? Because our world is, is, is not color in our world, it's your religion, right? And interestingly, even uh, Levi Le Bon himself, uh, the, the guy who came up with this uh, limit, uh, he, he thought that maybe this limit is just, uh, just some mathematical game. Maybe it doesn't have uh, some practical application, but it turned out that uh, recently this, this terminology color and show up a lot uh, in, in some fields of theoretical physics. And so I'm going to mention uh, just some of them. Uh, so purely from mathematical point of view, there, there have been a, a study about uh, the geometry and the symmetry of space-time. <coughs> 
generally curve square palm, right? In, in my example, you need in, in fat square, so you can do the same thing for, for curve square palm. So, so what are geometries? What are symmetry of square palm after taking the Kallian linear? There is also the question whether there is a relation with or some duality with the Galilean league. So this is like some, it's like a, from a mathematical perspective, right? But for physicists uh, in physics, there have been the study of Galilean limits uh, uh, of the of many relativistic theory, for example, field theory, such as scalar field. Sorry, scalar field. Electromagnetism, general relativity, symmetry, so on. There is also the question about uh, particle interaction in, in this color league. And of course, there is a, there is a, a question about uh, the multi particle system, such as hydrodynamics. What happens if you take this uh, color league? And this is uh, some example of what people are interested in, in, in this color limit. And, well, I guess some of them, I mean, some of, of, uh, of, of the people who work in this, uh, this limit, just, just want to do, do the mathematical game, but some of them want to kind of extract some useful information of, of this theory uh, under this limit. And somehow they think maybe it's useful to maybe help us understand the concept of like holography and stuff. And, and this is one thing. And there is another type of color physics that uh, I myself uh, am interested in. And, and this, uh, this type of, of color physics is uh, uh, occur in a, in a situation uh, even though you don't really, I mean, take this limit. So it's kind of like uh, the analogy to this uh, Kallian uh, limit. So we have this kind of, uh, of Kallian physics and most of them uh, concern the physics of now boundaries. So now boundaries is just a uh, type of boundaries in space time and black hole horizon is uh, just an example of now boundaries. And the reason uh, that we have this kind of emotion the Kallian physics emotion is that uh, it's because uh, the geometry and the symmetry of the now boundary is in fact uh, Carolian uh, geometry and the Carolian uh, symmetry. And as now in GT, this inspired uh, the study of the Carolian field theory in the hope of, of understanding more about the, the holography in fact space time in the same split as the uh, uh, SCLT holography. But at finite distance, uh, at the black hole horizon, there is also a connection between the, the near horizon limit uh, and the Carolian limit. So, so imagine if you like, uh, uh, look at the black hole from the outside and your distance from the black hole horizon is, is R, right? And if you, if you move closer to this, uh, this, this horizon, right? So uh, go to zero, there, there is an argument that this uh, to zero limit is in fact uh, and, uh, it's an analogy to this uh, this Kallian limit, um, which uh, takes from the relativistic uh, theory to the Kallian theory, and the dynamics of of the black hole is in fact uh, described by uh, by the dynamics of of the Kallian fluids. So, and this last part is uh, is what my work is focused on. And this helps like the basic idea. So, so okay. So, so let me summarize again. So, I just want to introduce you to this type of peculiar limit, a very strange limit, uh, opposite to the Galilean limit that we are used to. And although this uh, this type of limit, uh, this Galilean limit, Galilean thesis may have nothing to do with our uh, every, everyday life phenomena. Uh, some people, myself included, uh, believe that by studying this kind of, of current physics, it may uh, shed some light uh, in the understanding of the, the nature of space time, the nature of gravity, both as 
classical level or quantum level. And that's all I have to say. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Doc. Very interesting, uh, intriguing uh, talk. So, is there any questions or comments? I have a very stupid question. I, I'm sure it's oh, very stupid. Uh, okay, so maybe uh, near the slide where you introduce the C tends to zero. Yeah, but with the math on it. Okay, sorry. Yes, perfect. Um, so my question is, I'm sure it's very stupid, but um, I thought beta is V over C. And so then small b would be V over C squared. And so then the units in T prime equation don't work. Uh... So, sorry, so, so beta is, uh, is dimensionless, there is no unit, right? And yes, then, that's okay, but um, beta has no units, but beta over, so beta is V over C, so beta over C is V over C square, which has units of one over time. Yes, and? Uh, one over, no, no, meter, so if you take, X over V. Ah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> has, the, has the dimension of how so it should be agreed. Yeah, sorry. It, it, uh, I, I, I told you it would be a stupid question, and now I realize it's even stupider than I thought. So sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's OK. Yeah, maybe fine. some other people may have a wondering. So. Thank you very much. And the stupid question is the most welcome questions by all the speakers, <laughs> especially, I guess. Thank, thank you. So any other question? Yes. Yes. You mentioned canonical theory. Yes. Yeah. Can you also construct Quantum Canadian fusion. Can you quantize the fuse? Uh, I think uh, there are some people that, that work on, on, on this uh, this type Canadian quantum fuse theory. In the usual standard fuse, there is a renormalizable condition for four dimensional fuse It's It's a condition on the captain constant. So my question is, do you know my BT condition may change in the calorian field or? That's an interesting question. I, I, I do not know. Uh, I mean, I have, so, a, I have a question about the notion of a field theory, because here you don't have a space. Right? It's like one space point, and then you have a bunch of time. So at most, it's one dimensional field, correct? Because it seems that all the space points are decoupled. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like a single particle quantum. But then why is it interesting? <laughs> it seems to be pretty. Yeah, that's a good question. When when you think about it, when you try to think about how this picture is uh, strange. But I think what people do is just, uh, they just start from any few theory, then they just find a way to take this thing and, and work with your math. Yeah, but that's the guys mean that are the space, are the space, are the, like, are the space locations decoupled? Uh, it's something you can, cannot send a signal from one to from one point to another point. Yes. Maybe not. And, and there's a, there's a, also a study I haven't mentioned about uh, 
the possible of you of having the KG on particle. Uh -huh. So the KG on particle can can you go between points. Uh -huh. Yes. So I think that's still a way to to accommodate the points. So I don't think it's kind of completely decoupled. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's 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 what I understand. What what I guess. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's some related question, but uh, is there any commutativity? I mean, the quantization, uh, if first you quantize and then take the Calorian limit, or Calorian limit you quantize, which one is? <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. Is it commutable uh, or which limit uh, one should take first? Uh, I mean, which procedure one should take first? Probably quantize and take the limit. Maybe, Maybe this a, actually might be the key, right? Because if you take the other limits, then the theory would be decoupled. Yeah, but if yeah, the yeah, limit right. that you describe, yeah, yeah. then that'd be non trivial. Yeah, 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 I'm not sure about it. Let me check it out. Yes. Yeah. In the former scenario, could you have some sort of tunneling effect between the other form of statistical bias? I mean, they're just a magic relationship. I don't think it's like uh, this quantum covariant theory is like perfectly developed yet. It's just uh, uh -huh. and because you know, it's kind of technically and uh, sometimes it's really hard to imagine. And I think uh, people making progress is a very new field. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not not clear yet. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, is there any other questions or comments? If not, let's uh, thank oh, again for very interesting thoughts. Thank you very much. There's a question from the from first question the stupid one so if i if i'm in the phrase frame uh, the rest frame of a photon is that corollian dynamics is that how i should think of it that i mean i know it's, I know it's not physical but or no but now i'm not sure i i would guess no because you don't have you don't take any limit right so this thing is kind of uh, uh, so in some sense, it's kind of non physical. Right? Yeah, I mean, you cannot be in a rest frame of a photon anyway. Right. Well, well, but you cannot. So it doesn't matter. But it's the same thing here. Three of us can never be zero. So. Well. Well, second question. Uh, is this causal as a theory? Is, are you still, is this still a causal connection between the forms here or is it non causal? Because I'm taking a bit of a theory. Uh, right. I think it's still causal, right? It's just that you cannot yeah. communicate. Yeah, I think you have to stay in the license still. I think that, 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 that's what, what they would. That, that's why, yeah, uh, that's why I have to say that two different stages of one. Okay, so the only way to be causal is to have no interaction. Right, well, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know the, I don't know the exact answer. Mm -hmm. I it's not a cause that like not, not that interaction, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, information cannot have ever travel because mm -hmm. of my actual interaction. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a theory. theory. It's a very strange, like maybe. Yeah, but now the light code is kind of kind of cross, right? So if you want to send some signal outside the light code, so somehow, yeah. yeah uh, except you, uh, you accept uh, the existence of like KTON or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. so you can travel uh, faster than, than light. Right? Now uh, uh, the speed of light is zero, but it. Yeah, but the very notion of taxi on things better. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. There is also different from the light cone limit where everything, all the particles are traveling with the speed of light. No, that's what you call for the outside layer. Yeah, but at some point in the literature, they can feel these two things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This the, the thing that uh, if you can c go to zero, but at the same time, uh, they fix b or b. Uh, it is not just taking that c go to zero, maybe and the b, b is fine. Yeah. So I think that's the, so the I think there's still a thing. Okay, so everybody is satisfied? Well, you can uh, <laughs> uh, do. Well, please limit it uh, up to zero. I mean, uh, is there any other direction? Can C be negative? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can work on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. You can try to read. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> okay, so everybody is happy now. Okay, so let's thank uh, Patrick again for very interesting talk. Thank you very much.